Good morning, folks. The sun did not leave us hanging another day. It's given us beautiful activity to monitor on both the northern and southern hemispheres of the Earth-facing half of our star. Starting south, where it's a lone Alpha-class Umbra that must connect to the groups to the north, it managed to snap and release a minor CME behind Earth's orbital trajectory, solar tsunami as well. The northern eruptions were bigger and demanded looking at the interaction of two different sunspot groups to see the genesis of the flare event and CME. There is no doubt that these energetic features did release a CME of their own. I'll have an eruption the size of Jupiter with a million mile long ejecta line and a side of X-ray energy, please. It's difficult to tell if there is an Earth-directed component to the CMEs. Time will tell and hopefully they update the Enlil spiral. This event was not major in the flare category, almost an M flare at C9+. Let's go ahead and look at the sunspots. The big dogs that fired appear even more decayed and spread out. Complexity appears to have been lost even further. The spots behind them are smaller but beta class spreaders and one can see how these are getting close enough to interact with those big dogs out ahead of them. Tough to see any merit though down south. No real mixing, but then again, an alpha spot produced a solar tsunami last night, so that's patterns for you. The solar wind speed climbed like crazy and peaked out over 800 kilometers per second. That level of power was not shown on ISWA's charts, but here's the proof. The corona hole triggering the Nepal aftershock must have been incredibly powerful. Earth's magnetic field is not completely settled from the magnetic storm, but certainly doing better than it was yesterday when we saw each other. Here's the next coronal hole. ISWA isn't giving us forced data for this one either, so we'll have to see if the quakes continue or they wane away as the other factors do as well. Top link today is NASA's Earth Observatory and the sensitive readings of the ground movement at the Nepal quake zone. Some go up, some go down. Typhoon in the West Pacific is heading west, but may hook north fast enough to miss Japan. That would be nice. Just south of that, we're eyeing low pressure creeping up to New Zealand while the high pressure cell to the west clears the road as usual. Cloud lines sticking to the low and around the perimeter of the high pressure. It's going to be a lighter day in the United States. That heat and moisture flow is coming up through the center states, but it will take another day or so to gather the energy it needs for another major tornado outbreak. Less risk tonight, but still going to have some thunderstorms and flash flooding. Last but not least is Europe, still spotting the two northern lows, but the wind drives in the south-central parts of Europe are overpowering those, and they are stealing the show, putting on a local performance for folks in these darker cloud areas you're seeing there. Folks, please also remember, my wife and I are on baby watch. She's due any day now, so if I don't show up one of these mornings here soon, it's because we're at the hospital and I'm getting ready to be a dad. We've got your current conditions. Shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.